<clears throat> Facebook people, if you want to talk to me during the the stream, then you want to meet me over on YouTube because that's where I answer questions. Um, after the show's over, after I'm done broadcasting, I'll hop over to Facebook and answer all your questions, okay? Uh, but I'm mainly on watching the YouTube comments. Good morning, CJ. How are you? So it's been crazy. It, it's been really crazy. Um, so uh, as for those of you who don't know, I uh, had foot surgery yesterday around 11. Uh, oh, good. Okay. So I had foot surgery and mandatory COVID testing before they even do the surgery. Meaning, if you don't take a COVID test, we're not doing surgery. Of course, I've met with you three times for registration, and I've met with you in the doctor's office. I don't get it, um, but uh, it's mandatory at the hospital. It's not my doctor's fault. Uh, it's the hospital. They're just following uh, WHO, uh, the World Health Organization, who we've defunded or who we've stopped supporting, um, and it's CDC. They're all rules that the hospital's got to follow. I totally get it. So I was making more of it than it was. So my doctor was cool. So I said to my doctor, I said, just before I take this test, because they had the swab right there, but before I take this test, do me a favor. Explain to me how a swab inside. Oh, thank you, Mitch. Yeah. I asked my doctor, explain to me how a swab inside my cheek how that is any different than the back of my nose. What, you can only have COVID in the back of your nose? I don't know. So he goes, you know what? That's a very good question. Morning, beer brothers and bon appetit. Um, so he couldn't answer it. He, By him saying that's a very good question is, I, I know exactly what he's saying. He's saying, I totally agree with you. Why do we have to jam a Q-tip all the way to the front of your brain. He says, but let me give you some advice. Hey, Eli, how you doing? Um, he says, let me give you some advice. He says, when they put the Q-tip in your nose and they swab back there, nobody told me it was both nostrils. Nobody told me it was two swabs. They had to do it twice. I'm like, really? Hi, Bubba Gum, what's going on? Um, so I'm there. He says, don't. Tighten your nose. Don't scrunch your nose up. Don't don't tighten your body up. You know, just completely relax. It'll go back easier. They'll get what they need, and you're done. And I'm like, okay. I thought, this is ridiculous. So I said, so I called over. There was a nurse. One of the nurses, uh, thank you. I, I am starting to feel better. It's going to take a few days. I'm not feeling my best right now. So... Tammy made me go on live. She goes, I'm like, I don't know if I'm going to do a live show today. I just got out of surgery. I just, I slept two, two hour shifts all night long. It was just crazy. Every two hours I woke up. Um, it was a rough night the first night, but she's like, if you don't go, if you don't go on live, uh, Jack, the reason the swab, the nasal passage is because the mucus is so thick that it has a better chance of trapping particles such as pollen and virus particles. It is also easier to analyze mucus. Okay. That would have been a great explanation. Thank you so much. That is a great explanation, by the way. Thank you, Kyle. Um, good morning, Laura. How are you? Thank you to CJ and Laura for um, for moderating for me. Uh, oh, you know what? Hey, Mitch, I'm going to give you – I don't know if you're watching still, but I'm going to make you a moderator. So whenever you're on, you don't have to be around every week, but I'm adding you as a moderator. So that if you see anything inappropriate, um, let's get down there. There we go. So Mitch Healy is also a moderator on the show because Mitch Healy is like one of my best friends. So um, uh, how you seen some food shortages? I have. My Walmart has really no meat, bags of vegetables like Jolly Green Giant. Okay. I'm not going to say food shortages. That causes panic. And I'm done. I'm done with panic. I'm done with worrying. I'm done with arguing. I'm done with all that, that I'm basically just unfollowing people. If you make a mention and you're arguing one side or the other, unfollow. You're still my friend, but 
I'm just not going to see posts like that anymore. But, <clears throat> excuse me, still coughing up the, um, putting me under the stuff that goes in your lungs. It's been coughing that up all morning. Um, so anyway, uh, let me get back to the swab now really quick, and then I'll comment on the food shortage. Just hang on. So I took the test. I took the COVID test. It's not that bad. It's not that bad at all. It was like when she was done, I'm like, was that it? That was it? It did hurt. It, it was uncomfortable for two seconds. But it's like when I was a kid, I've stuck bigger things up my nose. So it didn't bother me. Um, she was awesome, by the way. She, the one who swabbed me was very sweet. Um, they know people don't like it. They do the best they can. Um, so anyway, now to get to the food shortage question, uh, let's see. I haven't seen food shortages. What I've seen is hard to get items. There's a difference between food shortages and hard to get items. A food shortage means you can't get any food. That's a problem. I have not seen that. What I've seen is exactly what I want is not available. So if I want, if I want, um, if I want to get a uh, Vandy Camp can of beans or something, it may not be available. I may have to go with the store brand, or I may have to go with another brand. That's what I've seen. Uh, glad you're doing good, Laura. Thank you. Uh, let's see. <coughs> Sorry, the anesthesia is still in my lungs, and it's just it's gonna be like this all day. So anyway, uh, last time I took the COVID nineteen test, I swear the po. The okay, I can almost guarantee it's like taking blood. Some people take it, they take a swab harder than other people. Uh, some people go deeper. Some people, you know, I don't, I don't believe everybody does it the same. I'm going to guess that because I've heard some painful stories and I didn't feel any pain at the hospital. I had a sweet nurse. She knew what I, I did. She knew I didn't want to. I did it under distress. I said, I said to the, there was another nurse who was like, not the nicest person in the world. I'm not going to say that. Uh, I'm not going to say that she was mean. She wasn't mean. She was probably head of the department doing her job. But she, um, she's the person who tells you no. I said, "What if I don't take the test?" She goes, "Oh, then we'll send you home." Hmm. Not into that. All right. So give me the test. But I want you to write down in my records I'm taking it under duress. So. I promise you, if I get billed anything for that test, I'm not paying it. I will fight that bill. Um, they did not, you know, I mean, that was being, it was forced on me and not something I agreed to or requested. But if then if they just charge the state, whatever, or the insurance or whatever, that's fine. I saw shortage, shortages of stupid things like SpaghettiOs. You'd be surprised what people value in the supermarket, uh, you're going to find shortages, but a lot of other things like, <clears throat> excuse me, if you go to the other side, let's say of Walmart, you got the supermarket. Let's not, let's get away from the food. The other side's got shortages only because half their stuff comes from China. And that's been a big issue lately. Um, I ordered some, some baby pictures to be digitized so I could do some artwork on it. I ordered it two months ago. I mean, guys, I don't know if you're seeing it. You're really going to enjoy not having mobility as usual with your feet. Both mine are oh, burned badly on bottoms. Please, God, heal them. Yeah, I'll take 50 COVID tests versus laid up feet. Richard, I am so sorry. I am with you. We, You know what? Friend me on Facebook if we're not already friends, and we can, we can wallow together. But I got one good arm, and I got one good leg. And the one leg isn't as good as the one they cut on. Oh, it's a mess. Down here in South Alabama, they actually had a shortage on Budweiser and Coors beer. See, yeah, that's a, that's a disaster. You guys must be falling apart. But anyway, um, I, I got to say, um, you guys, keep your chins up. We're all getting banged up. We're getting banged up on. Uh, I want to give some advice out today, be, but we're being banged up 
with everything. I'm jumping around subjects here because I'm reading your questions and I want to comment on all of them. Uh, we're being banged up on, you know, uh, Black Lives Matter. We're being banged up on masks. We're being banged up on uh, our kids going back to school or not. I mean, we're being banged up. We're like in a box and just being shaken. So just just hang in there. Um, think positive. Whatever you got to do to get in a good mood, you do it. Don't let depression sneak in because I, you know, I don't, I just, whatever you got to do to stay in a good mood. So what do I do? For me to be in a good mood, um, I'll plan something. I'll plan a get together. I'll plan a movie night. Um, I'll plan a, um, something, something to make people happy and excited in my family or in me or something like that. I'll grab one of the latest movies that just came out. There's not really that many movies that just came out, but like, um, uh, and then I'll have the family get together and we'll, we'll do, uh, we'll get the popcorn and we'll, we'll watch the movie and we'll order food in. And it, it was a big, it's a big movie dinner night. Um, you gotta, you gotta fight to stay positive guys, especially this year. And I love, and, uh, love, love people. Yeah. Love people. My wife's saying that upstairs. Loving people. Can I tell you, if you love your enemy, if you can truly love your enemy and love your neighbor, that's easy. But loving your enemy, you truly get satisfaction out of that. I've noticed spices have become less available, as well as garlic. Excuse <coughs> <coughs> me. So, yes, loving on people. The more love you show to people, the more it will lift your spirits. Physical activity, if your feet aren't burned or you didn't have it cut on yesterday, do some activity. Go for a walk. It's an antidepressant. Um, lift people up. I did something on Facebook once where I, every day, I would name one person in my life who mattered. That's right. Uh, best way to stay in a good mood is watch Cooking with Jack show. Yeah, watch me screw up. Watch me make the worst pickles you've ever seen. Seriously, I've watched video after video. Cooking with Jack actually made me forget the horrible stuff you see on the news. Yeah, I mean, just, you know, watch uh, Jack on the Go is even, even just as fun. So check that out. Uh, know that I'm not going not gonna to lie to you guys. I'm going to tell you if something's bad. I'm going to tell you if I fail. Sometimes when I fail, it's, that's the funny. Love is love, love for all. Uh, yeah, and that's, and it's also healthy for you. So, do things that put you in a better mood. Fight to be in a better mood. Don't give in to depression. Don't do that. Many of you deal with anxiety issues, I know, and depression and all that stuff. It's, it's not allowed. <coughs> Sorry. Uh, let's see. Uh, so, uh, a nice and wholesome dad. Where are my nuggets at? I love that name. So if you guys want to chat privately with me while I'm healing, I'm here for two weeks with my leg up. Uh, it's going to be straight so I don't get a blood clot and die. Um, and my leg will be reclined on a pillow. So it'll be kind of at the level of my heart, maybe a little higher. But basically, uh, oh, what happened? What happened to my arm? Um, this arm right here was affected by a stroke two years ago. Um I have no need to use it right now, but like I can, I can move it around. See, I can move the whole arm around. So it's very limited in use. The fingers are limited the way I can, I can't do this on, I can't do this on my other hand. Uh, I can't, you know, I can't pick up coffee with my other arm. It is what it is guys. Uh, but if you fail in a video, why do you say it's good? Then make another redo video. Um, well, because, like, for example, let me give you an example. Like the poutine, I thought was good, but I made it incorrectly, so I redid the poutine. The hockey puck Yorkshire pudding, I thought that's what it's supposed to look like, and it wasn't. It was absolutely horrible. I insulted the entire country of England. So sometimes it's edible, it's good, and I've done it incorrectly. It didn't puff up like it should. 
Uh, hi, Jack. Is Paul choosing the Jack on Go venues? No, no, no. My buddy, in fact, I talked to Paul this morning. Those of you who watch Jack and the Go, um, we, we want to, after I get better, we want to do, we want to do New Orleans and try and find the best gumbo and jambalaya. We want to do Mexican food wars. I mean, we want to do a bunch of stuff. God says that he provides for the birds. Gotcha. Yes, I know that scripture. Thank you, Rubber Wilbur. And if you're a person of faith, get deeper in your faith. Okay, so basically, whatever it takes to put your mood up, that's all I can say to you, because you have to, it, you know, it's just like a marriage. You have to fight to keep your marriage alive. You have to fight to be romantic. You have to fight to show love to your enemy. You have to fight to stay in a good mood. You know what puts you in a good mood. If that means starting to knit a blanket or quilt or whatever, that's your thing. If that's your thing. And I got like one arm, one leg. Ouch. Sorry. So anyway, my foot's starting to come back to life here, and it's all wrapped up. It's pretty, pretty wrapped up. <laughs> so funny. I dropped some food on it last night. A little red stain is on my, my wrapping. Timmy's like, is that blood? No, 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 no. That's That was from the um, Panera soup last night. Uh, a drop. Must have went off the side of the table. I don't know. Uh, fiance tried those ribs. You recently did best ribs ever. But now my fiance is kind of mad because I have asked the fiance to make them every other day. Guys, did you see the five-star ribs? That was crazy good. I am totally telling you. The five-star ribs was amazing. What a surprise. And it, they were lazy, man, too. It was just one ingredient. Boom. You put it on the ribs. Go go to my channel, watch, and do it. And I promise you, you won't be um, dissatisfied. You'll be very happy. So what's your next Lazy Man meal going to be? I know what my next burger meal is going to be because I just filmed the incredible Italian burger. And uh, if I don't know if you guys remember, back in California, I did the Maximum Mexican Burger. And then I just did the uh, incredible Italian burger. I'm, I'm doing the next one. I'm doing the um, awesome Asian burger. So we're going to have some good flavors on that. Not sure what kind of meat we're going to use yet. I'm still rummaging. Like the Italian, the Italian one, we use sausage, hot Italian sausage to make our patties. So uh, the Mexican one, we use chorizo. So you get it. We're trying to stay with all those flavors. So... The, the Asian one, I haven't, I'm thinking we're going to use ground beef, and I'm thinking, I haven't even created it in my head yet. I missed the very beginning. When did you have the surgery? Uh, yesterday. Literally, it was 11 o'clock, almost 24 hours ago. So it was a rough night. I look like crud. I look like I just woke up, but I woke up again and again all night long. Am I late to the chat? No, Dan, you're right on time. Don't you worry about it. Uh, I don't have a lazy man's uh, video lined up yet. I've been doing a bunch of them, so uh, I will be looking for more. But uh, let's see. Uh -huh. I'm English, and the best recipe for Yorkshire is cup of egg, cup of water. <laughs> yeah, so I literally did Yorkshire pudding, and I had these yellow hockey pucks in my pan. And it didn't ri rise up. It wasn't hot enough. And it was so embarrassing. What's the best hamburger of all time that you've had? Best hamburger I've ever had was at Planet Hollywood. It was Gordon Ramsay's restaurant called The Burger. And it's spelled B-U-R and then capital G-R for Gordon Ramsay. The Burger. And it was a farm burger. And it had, it was duck breast bacon. I didn't, didn't know that that was a thing. So they had duck breast bacon. They had a perfectly fried egg on there. It was so good because you guys remember, <clears throat> remember Joe Chavez and I would cut the hamburger in half and we would share it, right? So he took half, I took half, and then we tried this and we went, oh my gosh, this is the best thing, best burger that's ever touched my lips. It was amazing. It was the winner. That's why Gordon Ramsay follows me on Twitter right now is because I named him 
his burger, the winner of Burger Wars at that time. Uh, that is probably to date still the best burger uh, I've ever had. Uh, Slater's 5050 was really good for you, California folks. Uh, always wondered, Jack, why you made a separate channel for Jack and the Go instead of putting that content on Cooking with Jack. I'll tell you why. So, back in the day, it didn't require anything to start a new channel. You didn't have to get a thousand subscribers and 4,000 hours of watch time and all that. So, you just branched off. The reason I branched off is so that people who don't want to watch restaurant reviews, they want to watch cooking. So I'm going to stop doing the Saturday stuff that I've been doing, the YouTube, um, the training on social media marketing, and all that stuff. Uh, I don't want to confuse you. I try not to confuse my audience. So if I'm going to do technology, I'll start tech time. If I'm going to do um, uh, my faith in God, I'm going to do eye to eye. Uh, if I'm going to do restaurant reviews, I do Jack on the Go. So I try and stay in my lane. Jack on the Go took off so much that it, it could support its own channel. Uh, it's also a localized program. Sometimes I do a lot of local, uh, local places. So like a lot of people in Nashville watch me, but a guy in Montana don't care. He don't care how great that pizza place is right around the corner. So, so my, that's why it's smaller because it's more of a localized show. Um, that's why when I go on tour, now, I'm not a local show, and I put it on both channels when I do the Food War tours. Uh, how do you get your own cooking channel? Uh, you build it. You just, just build it. Uh, we never have thought Planet Hollywood would be the one. Yeah, it's the burger inside Planet Hollywood right on the, the uh, Las Vegas Strip. Okay? So um, that's why I started the channel for Jack on the Go. That's how you just build your channel. Just... You know, I, I train people, I consult people on how to, how to start, uh, uh, people will hire me to help them build their channel. And um, I've got two people that were amazing students. One I'm done with, but one, um, one and the new one uh, is called, it's, she's going to be on the show soon, Impact. Impact Adventures. She'll be on the show. And there, it's a survival outdoor channel. So if you're an outdoorsman or you're like, you like prepping, uh, that kind of stuff, you like healthy stuff, uh, it's going to be that kind of a show. And it's really good. They know what they're talking about. If not, they'll bring somebody in who knows, okay? That's the channel I'm helping build right now. Uh, I, I'm getting her a few videos lined up, uh, training her on how to edit. The hardest thing on YouTube is editing. Think about it. That's the only thing that keeps people from doing videos is editing. If you can learn the editing software, then you can do YouTube. Hold on, I gotta get my coffee. Uh, thanks, Tammy, for the coffee. So, editing is the hardest thing on YouTube. Everything else you can figure out. But editing, you gotta be taught. There's a lot. I do a lot of Zoom calls. She'll be like, okay, I'm at this point and I forgot how to do this. So I'll jump on a Zoom call with her. She'll share her desktop, give me control. And I don't like when I train people on YouTube. I don't, um, uh, I don't like, uh, I don't like doing anything. I make her do it all. So anyway, uh, looks like you're, let's see, you're in the boys club now. Thank you. So anyway, <coughs> so that's what I do. Um, there was some advice I wanted to give you guys on the show today. I'm seeing a lot of people, and I do a lot of marketing, So, and I have that marketing series I told them to stop doing, but I have a whole series on how to market your business. Okay, do me a favor. Don't choose sides. I don't care. You, you know what? Coffee shop. I don't care what your business is. You sell jellies. Don't, don't choose sides because when you choose sides – if you don't believe me, go call up Cracker Barrel. When they went up against Duck Dynasty on their, they got rid of their hats and everything, right? When they, they started banning Duck Dynasty stuff in their store, their core customer liked Duck Dynasty at the time. So what did they do? They damaged their business. I don't want to see any of you damage your business. 
You can have your own opinions. You can talk about them privately. You could talk about them on your personal account. That's all great. But stay in your lane. So if you're a coffee shop, stay in the coffee shop lane. Don't get in the political lane. Don't think you have a voice about anything else. Don't pull a Dixie Chicks. You've seen it happen to so many people. As soon as you take a side, as soon as you say, I like Trump or I don't like Trump, as soon as you say that, 50% of your business flies right out the window. It's one of the worst things you can do if you're a business person is to choose a side. Now, the, to remain neutral, say, I have my own personal opinions. That's, that's what your answer that's what your answer should be. I have my own personal opinions, but it's not my place to say here at the coffee shop. It's not my place to say on a, a car channel. It's not my place to say it's not my place to speak up here. Okay, just stay in your lane. If you're a cooking show, stay cooking show. I try not to talk about anything outside. On this show, we can talk about everything. On the live broadcast, you guys ask everything. That's fine. Um, yeah, yeah, I already took care. Uh, Gabby went to the boys club. Don't worry about it. Thank you, uh, Brenda, uh, for letting me know. So, um, still make party cheese salad. Oh, Anthony might be going there too. So, anyway, um, no, don't worry about it, bubble gum. I'm on that. So, did someone just join the Boys Club? Yeah, I had to send Gabby there. Everybody knows the Boys Club, it's become famous. If you belong in the Boys Club, congratulations. You can all talk to each other, but you can't talk to me. Um, change topic. Oh, okay, Wade. All right, yeah, we're changing it right away. Uh, how about them Dodgers? They're not playing much. How about that? I'm just kidding, Wade. All right, so we will go back to the show and talk about some of the stuff coming up. Did anybody see um, uh, Jack and Brianna on the date, the dating video on Jack and the Go? Uh, they do a random date night. I'm not going to explain it. I'll leave the kids to explaining that. But it was very, it was so creative. I had to film it to give you guys. Anybody can do it. I don't care what age. What's the big news? Tomorrow. Really? Yeah. Can I announce it? I can announce it. I can tell them. It's not a secret. Okay. So, <clears throat> so Jack and Brianna uh, are going. Uh, Wade, what's up? So Jack and Brianna are going to legally get married on paper tomorrow. They're going to they're gonna have a, a ceremony once all this crap blows over. They're going to have the celebration once the crap blows over. Probably, they're thinking, what, September? Yeah, September. They're thinking September, but they haven't locked it down yet. But they want to be married. So they're legally getting married tomorrow. You are the first people to hear that. Uh, Nike chose Kaepernick's side by signing him. Uh, it's paid off for them financially. Oh, that's good. That's good. But, you know, um, Nike. Yeah, I mean, um, who, Ryan Leaf's still available, another crappy football player. I I don't know about Colin Kaepernick personally, but as a professional football player, he's not a good football player. So why you would – that's like signing Ryan Leaf to a shoe deal. Of course, they just care about the money and they want to go for the biggest name. It isn't about who they believe or what they believe in. It's not about that at all. It's that Colin Kaepernick is at the top of the discussion. That's the only reason. But he's still a horrible football player. I wouldn't sign on my team. Anyway, um, so you guys are the first to hear about uh, Jack Jr. getting married tomorrow. He's going to go into his pastor's office. They're going to they're going to have witnesses and say their vows and everything. And then a wedding celebration will be planned for later on um, because they want the memory of, of having the celebration. So, any, and they'll probably honeymoon next year. So, you got to do what you got to do. I respect them for that. I'm, I'm glad for it. I wish them the best. Uh, you've never played football. Who are you to say which players are good or not? My eyes. I, I don't know what makes you think. I, I've watched him play. He had one good year. Go back and show me what year he, in my opinion, oh, yeah, in my opinion, there we go. In my opinion, he had one good year. So did Tim Tebow. Is he a good player? No, you'll be the first one to probably say he isn't. So 
but he carried a team to the Super Bowl. When did Ryan Leaf do that? No, Tim Tebow didn't do that either. I didn't say Ryan Leaf wasn't worse than Colin Kaepernick. You guys can stay up for Colin Kaepernick, but I'm telling you right now, uh, he's, I don't feel he's a good player. I, he's not my first pick. If I was picking sides, Red Rover, Red Rover, I wouldn't say send Colin Kaepernick over. So, um, yeah, he, he's not high on fantasy football either. He never was. So um, his last year, oh, it was a mess. You're right. Rubber Wilbur, you're right. Uh, he didn't do well his last year. So, like, Joe Montana is a good football player. Okay? All right. Tom Brady is the GOAT. I, I'm not a Patriots fan. I'm not a Tampa Bay fan. But Tom Brady proved it. Ring after ring after ring. No, Tim Tebow had one good year. He uh, helped bring them to the playoffs also. But then he, he lost in the playoffs. So, uh, see, Kevin here says Tim Tebow had zero good years. I'm sure he doesn't play football either. So, anyway, um, so uh, that's just my opinion. You guys can have your opinion. You can like Colin Kaepernick. Go get his jersey. Have at it. I got, I've got Dak Prescott's, you know, I got Zeke Elliott. These are good football players that are constantly good year after year. They're forces to be reckoned with. They're just crazy. So, um, you know, but, hey, what do I know? So, anyway, um, but, like, Tom Brady's the best. I, you can't question. You can't say, well, Joe, I think Joe Montana's the best. Well, Tom Brady has more. You got to go by stats. All right? I know nothing about football. Oh, well, I'm probably not watching football this year anyway. In my opinion, uh, do you watch the Premier League, Jack? No, but it's that's the biggest sport. I mean, soccer is, or football, European football, is the biggest sport in the world. It's crazy how big soccer truly is. Um, I played high school football but was kicked off the team for getting a DUI in my senior year. That'll do it. Yep, that'll do it. All right, Pep. Are you a foot a footy follower? I don't know. Jack, how will Cam Newton do on the Pats? Um, I'm worried about Cam Newton. I'm worried about Cam Newton because of injuries in the past. He's had struggle years where he's been hurt because of the injuries. Football is just it's really hard. And once you get banged up, I mean, just look at what uh, who's RG three? What's his name? Anyway, he got he went back in injured and re-injured his injury. It was a mess. So I think Cam Newton's going to struggle this first year. Um, I don't know. I'm hoping year two he'll get in his groove, but I think the first year is going to be a struggle. In my opinion, that's the new thing. I heard a great joke the other day about let me pull football club. Oh, let's not let's not attack anybody's teams or anything because I mean. You know, uh, but that's that's uh, soccer. Liverpool Liverpool football, right? Club is soccer. I'm guessing because they say it's football. I never played. Oh yeah, uh, boycotting football this year because they support. Okay, are you worried about him? Because no. Why would I worry about anybody because of their skin color? I I have no issues with that. You've heard it on the past. Do you think he can? No. Once again, I've never seen him consistently be good. That's the key. Okay? Remember, once is a fluke, twice is a trend. That's the slogan, okay? So, basically, if he can come back and then win it all or come back and take him to the playoffs again, well, my opinion might change. But it didn't happen. Oh, surgery. You want to know about surgery? Yeah, so just to let you guys know, um, surgery is, uh, went well yesterday. Um, I was up and down. Uh, he, I had, he said it was worse than the other foot. I didn't even know. I had issues with my Achilles tendon tearing. It was almost fully torn. It was about 80% torn. Uh, he said it was worse than 80% when he went in there. Uh, he went into my foot. He cut it open. He, he took uh, a... 
he took a uh, Achilles tendon off a cadaver and he weaved it into mine. I know some of you don't want to hear this. Sorry. You're here for food. But then he replaced it and sewed me up. And now I've got eight weeks of, oh, really? Yeah, eight weeks. So uh, it's going to be fun. I've done this before on the other foot. So we're just good. What's good on Netflix these days? You know what everybody's talking about these days, TV-wise? Is the show Yellowstone. And it's on the Paramount Network. Nobody has that. But a lot of people are talking about Yellowstone being a great show. Uh, it's not on Netflix. I looked. It's not on Hulu. It's not. Well, it might be. On, I didn't check Hulu. But it, it's not on Amazon. Uh, it's not on your regular packages. Uh, Jack, are you a sub man or a hoagie man? I'm a sub man. I didn't learn the word hoagie until later on in life. So I, I grew up subs. Uh, my mom, oh, you know what? No, no, no. I lied. My mom, when I was a little, little kid, used to call them hero sandwiches. I guess that was a sub, a hero sandwich. So I'm more of a hero sandwich kind of a guy, but more of a sub than hoagies. Uh, I love Yellowstone. Paramount has a channel. Yes. Uh, Jack, did you hear the double rainbow guy on YouTube passed away in May? No, I did not hear, but I did not know who that was. I'm just hearing from you right now about that. Apparently, there was there is a Liverpool FC fan that has a magic lamp because Liverpool was the league of it's football talk. Uh, the government paid him to stay home for a week, and now he's wondering what to do with his last wish. Okay, Kevin's a big time hoagie guy. All right, I I don't. I never called them hoagie because from California, they call them subs. Like if you, I think if you were in Boston, I think they call them hoagies in Boston, Philadelphia, New York, uh, more East Coast, West Coast. It's a flipping sub. That's it. You know, that subway and, you know, all that. What's the difference? I don't think there is a difference. Um, let's see. Oh, my foot's getting, starting to. It, my foot's the, the nerve block is starting to wear off. So I'm starting to feel my foot again. Four scorpions in my basement. Hey, do me a favor, Bubblegum. If we're friends on Facebook, if we're not friends on Facebook, friend me on Facebook. If we are friends, send me a picture, if you can, of one of the scorpions. I, I saw one scorpion my whole life. And it was at a zoo or something. One of those museums or whatever. Uh, why are you boycotting football? Uh, I must have missed what you said. Why am I boycotting football? Because once again, football can't stay in its lane. Football has become political, and I'm not going to be a part of that. I'm not supporting anybody who wants to take a side. You know, politics needs to stay out of sports. <laughs> Unfortunately, even my show has got politics in it. So I try not to get too much into that. Um, you know, I, I boycott, I'm still boycotting baseball. Uh, do you guys remember when they had the strike and they had the dispute over salaries? How many millions they should make? Millions, really? How many millions they should make so they missed the World Series? I've never bought anything from baseball ever again. Never bought a baseball hat um, with the baseball team on it. Nothing that was going to support a baseball team. I was so mad at the whole organization. How do you miss a World Series? That's just that's just awful. I mean, I could get it. A pandemic may make you skip a World Series. I get that. But not over money because we're not getting paid enough millions. So anyway, uh, the Double Ring had a viral video. 50 million. Okay. I slipped in mud April 8th. Broke ankle in two places. Had to have surgery. I'm still on crutches. I feel for you. Prayers for your healing. Thank you, Chris. Prayers back to you, too. Uh, so you're boycotting football because... They acknowledge racism. Nope, don't reword my, my phrase. Just the fact that political statements have taken over the game of football. I don't, I don't like, I, I'm for a cure for breast cancer, but I don't like seeing my football players in pink. I can say that. Yeah, because of the color of their socks. But, I mean, that bothers me the month of October. They spend billions of dollars in tangible stuff to make everything pink, 
everything, the new helmets, new jerseys, billions of dollars they could feed people they spend on the field. Billions of dollars that could cure cancer they spend on the field. That's why I get upset. When politics crosses sports, there's a problem. And that's why. It has nothing to do with racism. Um, because, you know, it's just, it's, these are all political opinions uh, that I don't want to be feeding into. My girl is watching in Top, top Sea Russia and really wants a Russian food episode. Okay, so do me a favor. Shout out to Christina. Christina, how are you? Okay, do, do me a favor. Send me a Russian recipe, a deep Russian. Any international recipes you guys got. I don't want American Russian. I don't want some, you know, the way Americans make things. I want how real Russians. I want a thing I've never even heard of. Make sure I can, you know, don't, don't give me like, oh, well, it's got to be gopher meat. I mean, I'm not going to be able to get gopher meat out here. You know, uh, don't give me some weird stuff, but give me some special uh, deep recipes, and I'll take a look at them. Are you going to try Arby's new bacon-wrapped jalapeno beef and cheddar? Hmm, I haven't. Uh, Jabberwocky, I have not heard that yet. Who knows what Kasu Marzu cheese is? Hmm, I've heard that, but I've probably never seen it. Try Arby's new chicken sandwich. Wow, Arby's got a lot of stuff coming out. All right, guys. And if you want, send me messages on what I should do on Jack on the Go, and I'll take a look at them. I had a whole, let's see. Uh, Jack Jr. hair is pink. For now, when it was, it was purple, wasn't it? Hey, Tam? What? Wasn't Jack Jr.'s hair purple? It was purple turned to pink. It was purple, and the sun made it pink, go towards pink. So, um, I am guessing that you're related, Dan, you're relating that to my comment about, <coughs> excuse me, my comment about football. You guys love to try and hook me into things. You guys love to try and prove me wrong. You guys love analyzing every word I say. It's almost like, why bother? Why bother talking? Why bother doing anything? Because these, once again, these hooks come down. It's, I have nothing against racism. I have nothing against pink. Keep it away from football, though. You know, football, you know, let's play football. Let's not waste money. I have logical reasons for why I choose certain things. Uh, let's see. Jack's hair turned pink, not by choice. They didn't pay him to make his hair pink. I mean, it just wasn't that's something completely different. He should have used color-treated shampoo is what Tammy's saying. I don't know anything about that. Um, uh, show that. Yeah. So I, I don't know if there's gopher meat in Russia. I made that up. I mean, but like uh, Israel may have uh, goat's meat. You know, certain countries use, um, yeah, certain countries use different meats. We do mostly beef, chicken, and pork out here in America. And very rarely venison and shark steak and all that. It's their bourbon, thick cut glazed bacon and a pepper roast beef. Uh, would Randy Macho Man Savage be Ivan? I don't know. I w you know, I was in a wrestling, but my favorite wrestler is Stone Cold Steve Austin. He was. I'm so sorry to have seen him go. Oh, Dan, don't, don't ever apologize, man. I, I saw that you were just jabbing me. Had nothing to do with you. It's everybody as a whole. Uh, is he going to be married with the pink hair? I guess. I don't know. Uh, probably, unless he colors it tonight. Calm down. He just mentioned it because you said pink. Yeah, I know. I know what I'm talking about. I know. Telling somebody to calm down is the worst thing you can do. Yeah, calm down really means don't calm down. It's like, well, I'm not going to insult you, but let me tell you this. Along comes the insult. So anyway, she can really sing. Uh, I like Pink's music. Yeah, yeah, she is a good singer. Uh, I remember when someone asked you if you've eaten monkey. Yeah, I, I, yeah I, I don't know if I could ever eat monkey. 
there's certain animals I might have trouble eating, um, like things people normally eat. So I know they eat monkey brains in certain countries. Uh, snake is one that I want to try. Hold on a minute. <clears throat> anyway, I'm way over time. My foot's waking up. Um, do you like the song Happy Jack by The Who? I don't know it. Is the pink hair part of his hip-hop persona? No. No, he did it. Why did he color his hair? Because they were bored during COVID. And Brianna they were bored during COVID. This is what kids do when they're locked up for more than a week. So they were bored during COVID, and all the kids were coloring their hair. So he chose purple because it was his favorite color, and the sun made it pink because they didn't use um, a color protective shampoo. Uh, Jack, who is your favorite jazz musician? Um, I like uh, Coltrane. I like him. I listen. It's funny you say that. Like when I'm taking a nap right here in the recliner, uh, as my foot heals, when I'm sleeping, I put jazz music. Uh, I have an evening jazz playlist. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, I tattooed a treasure map on my thigh during COVID. See, we all did crazy stuff during COVID. We went bonkers. Can leave us locked up that long. Yes, they do. They do that. Uh, what's your favorite vegan meal? Mm. Okay. My favorite vegan meal, I mean, I don't have a favorite vegan meal. I don't eat vegan, but sometimes I might. If I'm just eating carrots, I'm eating vegan. You know? I mean, I don't, I don't cook vegan. And that sounds like the making of a great hip-hop song. COVID rap is a thing. Is it? I never even heard that. That I bet it's hilarious. Uh, we had lots of purple hair and blue hair. Yeah, they, the kids got, got a little crazy there for a little bit. They were going a little bonkers. When a child's asking to go back to school, okay. My son wasn't doing that because he's out of school. I, I, I feel so bad for you guys. I'm going to say goodbye right now, but I feel so bad for you guys because you have children that are still in school because of all the confusion. I'm so sorry. A lot of people out here are homeschooling. They're just, they're just over the whole guessing game. They've made no decisions. I know some counties like, we don't care what you think. We're opening schools like regular in September. I'm like, okay. Jesus, my face mask, face mask would be a great song title. Yes, that would be. You could have fun with that song. Uh, Alexi looked like Joy from the movie Inside Out. Oh, that's hilarious. Yeah, John Coltrane's album, Ballads, is my favorite jazz album. Oh, yeah, what? You know what? It's like, well, who do you like in R&B? I mean, you got to say, like, Michael Jackson or, you know, some of the other. I mean, John Coltrane's is, like, number one for jazz. Uh, so uh, this jazz, I like... Uh, I think it's Stan Getz. I think it's his name. I haven't listened to him in a while. But I like his. He's playing on the saxophone. I don't listen to jazz or blues much. But I love them. I love the blues. I love jazz. I love all that stuff. All right, guys. I got to go take my medicine now. My foot is starting to wake up and starting to hurt right now. So I need to go tend to it and get it lifted up again in my recliner. But I wanted to spend some time with you. It's our Saturday morning get-together. Um, if I offended you in any way, I'm sorry. I, I just feel certain ways about certain things. And I, I try to give you the truth. Uh, some of you don't like that I, I have opinions of different categories. Um, so anyway, I apologize if I offended anybody. But I will be here next Saturday. And you can bring me more questions. And uh, I will say goodbye to you all. Take care. Bye-bye.